Well, hi guys, Emma again. Welcome to part seven of this little engine rebuild. This is the flywheel. I've chucked up a bit of 50 mil brass. It's just ordinary brass, and faced and machined the end of it. And so, first thing really, put a center drill in it. That's pretty straightforward. Now, this tapered pin reamer is quite long. And if we look at where it intercedes, it's right back up here. Uh, before it'll even cut anywhere near like it's going to fit. So what we need to do is part this off and set it up. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. Um, probably in hindsight, I should have left the crank disc off the off the crank until we'd finished the flywheel and that way I could set it up with a drive dog and a drive plate on centre and get it all machined up nice and get it to length and everything and I might still do that we'll have a look but that's probably ideally the way that we should do it so we need to drill this through a bit, bit bigger than this if we measure the smallest diameter It's about six and a half mil. I reckon if we 6.4, 6.2, the crank's about 6.7. What have we got there? Is about 6.4. If we drilled in through six millimeters, would be a good start. And we might do that first. Just make sure we are through far enough. got there is about we'll just check that with a steel ruler and we're only about I guess 14 millimeters so that should be plenty now if we part this off 15 millimeters long actually we might just part it off at 14 millimeters long So I've set that to just a fraction more than six, 14 millimetres. We're going to turn it around and face the other side and set it up. I've worked that out. So that shouldn't be far out. So we'll part that off. And that's that parted off. So I guess the best way to set this up and to ream it, we should have a good square side with a nice parallel bore. If you had a decent three jaw chuck, it would probably be good enough to use the outside jaws. It does want to whisk her off there, off the back. Now that's quite a sizable little flywheel. So what we're going to use is just clean this up. Really nicely. And we're going to find our two nice bits of parallel tool steel. 
I'll give him a wipe and just check to make sure we've got them the right way around. We're going to sit them through there. Hold them in place. Make sure everything's nice and flush and there's no chips or anything under it. I'm going to slip this out here. Give him a spin just to make sure there's no wobble in it, and it's pretty sweet, really. And we'll face that down to 14 millimeters. Gosh, a quick change tool post would be nice, but I'm getting quick at that. We've got to just turn that down until it's nice. A nice neat 14 millimeters. Still wants about a millimeter off it. So we'll just check that with a ruler again. That's pretty sweet. We'll just break that edge nicely. So just slip this, this bearing and crank out the engine. And I guess we want to push that in until it just has the right amount of end float. So we'll go a bit further. getting really close just a fraction at a time it's still got a little bit of end float there get everything nice and clean I guess if push comes to shove and we go a little bit far, we can easily take a bit more off it. It's still got a fraction too much. So just a little, little, little bit more. I'm just sliding this in. I'm not actually winding it in because... It's very easy to go too far. And to be, be too positive with it. That's just a fraction tight, I reckon. If we push that into where it should be, then that's just a fraction too tight. So I'm going to take about. I'm probably going to take five thou off there. If you notice, I've still left this on the same setting, so careful not to bump it. So it should be a fairly simple job just to, just to clean that up. The tiniest, 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 tiniest little amount.
put that on. We'll put that home. It's got a fraction too much in float still, I think. We might just touch that in there and give it another scrape. Just by hand like that. Be careful there's no shavings in there. I think that's probably nice and clean. We're going to find that that's just a fraction tight again, so that's the difference between it being clean and otherwise. That's about 0.4 of a millimetre off the outside there. an air compressor to blow that out would be really nice and it's still just a fraction tight so I'm going to take a fraction more out It wants a little bit of inflow, it doesn't want to be locked up tight. But it doesn't want two millimetres of wobble either. If you've got a bit of blue tack or something to clean that out, it's probably as good as anything. So, flat battery again. But I've just taken my time and I've got this pretty sweet really and I've given that a clean up it's still not quite running true there's a tiniest tiniest bit of wobble in that if we have a look To be honest, I'm probably not going to worry about it. The ideal thing, I guess, would be to set it up between centers and machine the outside and get it running nice and true again. And that's probably worth doing. I reckon it's got about... Look, if it's got 5,000 run out, I'd be surprised. So I'm going to leave it at that. And that's the flywheel finished. So this, this engine's starting to get pretty weighty with this big brass flywheel. Um, I had intended to put a recess in the back there and to bring the bring the back of the flywheel back in another five mil or so, but there's no way it needed it. That's fifty mil by fourteen millimeters. That's plenty good enough. That's our thread all back on. Our nut and our washer could be a little bit thinner, and we might even set that up and take a little bit more off it. They're just fine tuning things. But the only real bit left now, I guess, 
is the piston. So that's the next job. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to subscribe and part eight to come.